Hey there, and welcome to Lever Time, the flagship podcast from The Lever, an independent investigative news outlet. I'm your host, David Sirota. On today's show, we're going to be talking about conservative propaganda, specifically Prager University. Do you have a doctorate from Prager University? Are you taking classes at Prager University? Have you heard of Prager University? It's an online advocacy group that portrays itself as a university and that churns out thousands of hours of quote unquote educational content with the purpose of advancing conservative ideology and talking points. But what's most concerning about Prager University is its educational content designed for and specifically targeted at children. And some of it is now being shown in public schools across the country. Today, I'm going to be joined by Josh Olson and Dave Anthony, hosts of the Audit Podcast, which you can find at levernews.com slash audit. It's one of our podcast network affiliates. Uh, Their new season covers Prager University's coursework and how dangerous it's become for America's children. We're going to talk all about that with those hosts. For our paid subscribers, we're also always dropping exclusive bonus episodes into our Lever Premium podcast feed. Last week, as an example, we shared our extended interview with the leading artificial intelligence expert, Max Tegmark, about the growing debate around artificial intelligence and super intelligence, one of the most fascinating and frankly terrifying discussions I've had in a long time. Coming up next week, two separate interviews, one with Brendan Ballou and the other with Josh Rosner. Both of them have authored new books about the private equity industry. Anyone who reads the Levers reporting knows how vast and destructive that industry is. And my interviews with both of them go even deeper on that industry that seems hell-bent on controlling every single aspect of the economy and our society. If you want to understand what private equity really is, wait for that bonus content in the Lever Premium podcast feed. If you want to access our premium content, head over to levernews.com and click the subscribe button in the top right to become a supporting subscriber. That'll give you access to the Lever premium podcast feed, exclusive live events, and all of the in-depth reporting and investigative journalism that we do here at The Lever. The only way independent media grows and thrives is because of passionate supporters and by word of mouth. So we need all the help we can get to combat the inane bullshit that is corporate media. So go subscribe. It directly funds the work that we do. I'm here as always today with Lever Times producer, Frank. What's up, producer Frank? Not much, David. Um, I got to ask you a question right off the bat. Go for it. it. Look, you know that I don't care for sports. I don't watch sports. I'm not, it doesn't take up any space in my mind (laughs) culturally. Um, But I saw you, you tweeted something about the Denver Nuggets and a a mortgage industry billionaire. Can you, can you please explain what this connection is? Yes, Frank. So I'm deep into the uh, Denver Nuggets playoff uh, obsession. The Denver Nuggets are playing the Phoenix Suns. I I have not liked the Phoenix Suns uh, sort of for much of my life because they, ultimately got Charles Barkley. They The Sixers traded Charles Barkley to the Phoenix Suns, so I've loathed the Phoenix Suns for a very long time. Although I did root for them when they were in the championship because when Barkley was on the team. But taking Charles Barkley out of Philadelphia was like a heartbreaking experience for me. And now we got the Denver Nuggets. I live in Denver, uh, playing the Phoenix Suns. Uh, and it's tied, at, as of right now, it's tied 2-2. Although when this when this comes out, hopefully the Denver Nuggets will be up three to two. But in and what the, is this? It, is this is the playoffs. This is the playoffs. Is that that, that's right. right. Okay, got that's it. right. So big thing that happened for those who watched. Uh, Jokic, the Denver Nuggets' uh, best player, two-time MVP in the NBA, uh, was going for a ball. It went out of bounds, and he tried to get the ball back. And the Phoenix Suns owner, who is a mortgage billionaire, uh, sort of, kind of got in Jokic's face. And Jokic was trying to get the ball out, and and Jokic kind of bumped this mortgage billionaire guy, and and he flopped. Like, he tried to take an offensive foul from the stands, and Jokic got called for a technical foul. I mean, so so in other words, the Suns owner literally drew a technical foul for his team by flopping 
and pretending that he had like been, you know, really hurt by Jokic. And, and I, I was commenting on social media that, you know, he, here's, uh, it wouldn't surprise me if a mortgage billionaire now, now asked the authorities to give his team, the Phoenix Suns, a bailout uh, by suspending Jokic, <laughs> right? Because that, you know, that would be very on brand for mm-hmm. uh, a mortgage billionaire. But hopefully Jokic does not get suspended. And so that's what I was talking about. Listen, man, there are billionaires behind every door in American society, certainly in professional sports. It was really funny when I tweeted that out. Some people were like, they couldn't process that there was like a, a, a semi, I was tongue in cheek, but a, but a semi political angle to something that had happened in the game. But that that play was like a, a huge play, a lot of, lot of discussion about whether Jokic was right or the, or the mortgage billionaire uh, was right. So listen, the Denver Nuggets, hopefully when you're listening to this, will be up three to two. Uh, now, for those who don't care about professional sports at all, before we get to our uh, featured interview today about Prager University, I do want to take one more moment to talk about a big story The Lever published last week about so-called greedflation. I hope you've read that story. If you haven't, go to levernews.com and find it. We're going to have a future episode on this. And for those who don't know what the term greedflation means, it was a term that, that, that was manufactured to make fun of. The people who were saying a year, two years ago, that inflation was being driven not by workers' wages, not by government spending on survival aid, but by corporate profiteering. Pundits across the country were scoffing at that. You may remember this. We've covered this a bunch. At one point, Jeff Bezos owner of the Washington Post, uh, founder of Amazon, tweeted out a column from one of his columnists at the Washington Post uh, saying that it was just a conspiracy theory uh, that corporations uh, were using their market power uh, under the guise of inflation to squeeze more profits uh, out uh, of the of the country and ra- by raising prices. I still love that. Just like Jeff Bezos being like, look at this interesting article that I found <laughs> I from this newspaper. What what a coincidence. Right, right. And, and I love how he's like portrayed as some apolitical newspaper owner. You know, the newspaper is just a newspaper. It's not a political weapon. Meanwhile, I'm going to blast out a column uh, that happens to defend, you know, corporate America writ large, potentially Amazon specifically from the charges that we are using market power to jack up prices on America, right? Obviously a political use of his newspaper. And here's the important point. The story at Lever News this week shows that the assertions that inflation doesn't have to do with corporate profiteering, there's overwhelming data now that shows that that's bullshit. That in fact, that's what is driving inflation. And that That shouldn't be surprising. We've lived through an era of lax antitrust enforcement. So companies have gotten bigger and bigger. They control more and more market power in their markets. So they are in a position to raise prices and not fear as much competition undercutting their prices. So this is a very logical, fact-based a theory of what's going on. It's not even a theory. It is what's going on. And you don't have to believe me. It was recognized by a Federal Reserve study. It was recognized by a top economist at UBS, a giant mega bank, not exactly a super lefty organization. It's been recognized by European central bankers. And now even Rupert Murdoch's Wall Street Journal. So in other words, pundits touted this idea that it was really workers' wages and government spending that was creating the inflation problem. It wasn't corporate profiteering. And now all the evidence shows, actually, it was corporate profiteering. Now, you may be asking, all right, Sirota, why is this a problem? Who cares? Like, okay, so like the pundits were wrong. Well, because those pundits created a fake narrative that ended up creating the conditions for very real policies. This is like the economic version of the WMD lies. From the Iraq war, the narrative provided government officials justification to cut off pandemic aid, to block new spending on survival aid to people, to abandon any push for a minimum wage increase and to raise interest rates with the express goal, in the words of the Federal Reserve chairman, of driving down workers wages. 
So the results of that creation of a narrative and which justified those policies is a sharp increase in the number of Americans who can't afford to pay their bills. Like this, this is why when we cover pundit lies at the lever, we do it not just because it's fun to sort of poke holes in people's lies, but because those lies help create the discourse conditions for very real policies. And in this case, the evidence is absolutely clear. Now, not surprisingly, none of these pundits have apologized. Didn't you find that funny in our story, Frank, that just none of them would apologize or admit that they were wrong in the face of all this evidence? Yeah, I don't know if I would call it funny. I I would call it like a, you know, they can't break the narrative because it would discredit everything that they do. It would discredit their like their entire body of work, their entire persona as a journalist or a pundit. So to 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 acknowledge it whatsoever would I think give, you know, their readers or their audience the the green flag to be like, you know what, actually, I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. And maybe you guys shouldn't listen to me anymore. Well, and that's the thing that it's important to remember. And you can see this in our story that These pundits, and whether it was Larry Summers or the Washington Post editorial board or whoever else that we document in there, Matt Iglesias, another example, they weren't just like, well, look, you know, corporate profits are only a little piece of inflation or they're a smaller piece or they're they're, they're only one factor. The, The one that Bezos tweeted out, I think, or at least the one at the Washington Post that got a lot of attention was like, you're a conspiracy theorist if you even suggest that corporate profiteering is part of the inflation problem. Like, it wasn't like a measured, you know, we need to take a full look at this thing. It was like anybody who says corporate profiteering has anything to do with an infl- with inflation is an idiot, is a conspiracy theory, should never be listened to again. And so they created a, a discourse in which even questioning that orthodoxy was simply not allowed. And it's a discourse as you suggest, that you can't really easily back off of without completely discrediting yourself. You can't run out there and say it's a conspiracy theory to say these things. And then all the data comes in and shows, actually, that's true. What was said was exactly true and you were wrong. And then be like, well, I, I guess I got it wrong because because they dug in so hard at the beginning. So I want everybody, if you can, go check out our story on this at levernews.com. We're going to be talking to a couple of experts on this and in an episode in the future about this because it really is so important. And it's it's so important to the to the larger economic discourse in the, in this country. Last thing I'll say about this is it's good news that that data is now so explicit because I think at this point it is completely undeniable and the hope is is that in it being undeniable we can get better policies. Okay, we're going to stop there because we should get to our main interview. Uh, our main interview today about Prager University, one of the most powerful weapons of conservative propaganda in the entire country that is kind of operating slightly under the radar, but with huge, huge impact. We're going to talk to the hosts of the audit podcast who have been uh, investigating and deep diving on that propaganda, how it works and what you should know about it. But first, let's take a quick break. Welcome back to Lever Time. For our main interview today, We're going to be talking about the massive conservative propaganda machine known as Prager University. If you spend any time online, especially on YouTube or Facebook, you've probably seen some of Prager University's video content. It usually starts with someone telling you that radical left-wing socialists and communists are planning on destroying America and taking away your freedoms. Then they'll justify that perspective by presenting wildly inaccurate and whitewashed information. To be fair, Prager University's videos are technically well-produced. They look super professional, which lends some air of credibility to the insane bullshit that they are dumping into the discourse. And while you may have shrugged off their content as just another right-wing outlet in an already giant ocean of insane bullshit, there's something that sets Prager University apart that is uniquely disturbing. Prager University produces some of the most successful children's educational content on the internet. Videos specifically targeted towards children and their parents with the goal of indoctrinating kids from a very young age. And look, you may even think, look, I don't agree with Prager University's politics, but a parent has every right to teach their kids whatever they want. But there's something even more nefarious happening. 
Prager University videos are now apparently finding their way into the American educational system, with teachers across the country using Prager University's videos in their classrooms, with or without the consent of students and their parents. To break down everything you need to know about Prager University, I'm now going to be joined by Josh Olson and Dave Anthony, the two hosts of the Audit Podcast, which is produced here at the Levers Podcast Network. Josh and Dave, along with their roster of special guests, have been watching hours and hours of Prager University videos and have been digging into how this propaganda machine started, where it gets its money from, and how it's attempting to indoctrinate America's children. Hey, Josh. Hey, Dave. How you guys doing? Uh, we're, we're, you know, we've been watching hundreds of hours of PragerU videos, so we're kind of suicidal. I know. I'm, I'm like surprised you can respond coherently. You're not, you're, I, I have this like clockwork orange view of you, <laughs> like you, like your eyes taped open. Pretty much. Watching yeah. uh, Dennis Prager for hours and hours and hours. And, and that's what you're what you're here to talk about. That's what season uh, three of the audit is. For those who don't know, the audit is uh, the podcast from, uh, from Josh and Dave, uh, the audit audits classes. They took a, a series of classes at Prager university uh, auditing that coursework. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like trying not to laugh as I call it coursework. Um, <laughs> I would, I would imagine <laughs> most of our listeners uh, have a, Maybe a general idea of what Prager University is, but for I guess for anyone who doesn't know what Prager University is, uh, what is it? Is it an accredited university? Can you get a degree there? No. Um, you know, can you get a doctorate? Uh, why did you guys? We'll start with Josh. Why did you guys feel it was necessary to audit Prager University classes for this season of the audit? Uh, I want to tell everyone it's because I, I lost a bet to you and you made us. But um, no, I, I should start because Dave's the one who kind of took it to the next level. Like I was aware of Dennis Prager for years as a right wing radio talk show host in uh, in Los Angeles. And he used this kind of Talmudic logic, he would he would claim, I think, uh, to sort out problems and, you know, apply apply that wisdom to various issues and come to the conclusion that, you know, homeless people need to be exterminated or whatever, you know, issue he was coming out on. And I kind of lost track of him. And then I noticed this Prager U thing. And I don't even know if I ever watched a video. It looked kind of seedy and fly by night. And every now and then someone would post something on Facebook or Twitter and I'd never really watch them. And I can't remember how they first came up. It was a conversation with Dave. And Dave was like, no, they're huge. You have no idea. Before he takes over to say, I know that it was Dennis Prager and a friend of his who was a TV writer Prager, I guess, first wanted to start an actual university. And this guy was like, no, it's better. Let's do this online thing. Um, but yeah, but Dave was the one who kind of, you were, you were more aware of PragerU than I was initially. Well, it's a, it's a propaganda tool for the, the rich right wing guys to, uh, to tell people how to think. I mean, that's simple. It is. They're just, they're just, you know, forming brains the way they want them, to, <laughs> want them to form out there. And the messages are vile. Uh, they're very pro fossil fuel. Um, it, it's everything that's the opposite of, of what a just decent human being should think, essentially. But it's, 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 it's one of the best propaganda tools going in America. Apparently, Daily Wire and Prager University are among the largest uh, sources of climate science misinformation in the world. Yes. That's how well, I'm being a huge environmentalist. That's how I first realized how how bad they are, because the arguments that I would see being made, I couldn't figure out how they were so dumb and where they were coming from. And then I saw a list of the top um, uh, platformed, uh, I guess, companies, media companies, whatever on uh, on Facebook and PragerU was really high up there. And so I watched a few of their fossil fuel videos and I was like, oh, and then I started just reading about them and they their reach is is extraordinary and 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 it's very very easy to send your uncle or brother or whoever a five minute video that they'll watch uh, that's why i think it's probably worse than fox news and everything else because people are just like oh check this out here's this thing about trans people and it's just abhorrent and and here's the here's the thing i think what's it's it, it's the reach 
But I, I think with Dennis Prager, and I say this having once debated him here in person in Denver, oh, that, that wow. the Prager God. fandom, this is 10, 15 years ago, I was on the radio here in, Den in Denver. They invited me to be a, a sort of, uh, uh, you know, they thought I would be like a punching bag at a, at a, at a debate, and I, I decided to do it. And the thing I, I think about him and the reason why it has such reach is because – it doesn't purport to be like screaming in your face. Right. It doesn't purport to be – it purports to be like very intellectual, right? Yeah. Like it, it, it has this – it's in this weird space where it's flying under the kind of corporate media radar. But the reason I think it, it gets distributed so much is because it's like we're going to give you seemingly uh, super intelligent intellectual arguments that – granted, are not based in any fact. Uh, and so it's confirmation bias for conservatives with the patina of intellectual heft, right? Dennis Prager, yeah. when you meet him, thinks he's a really smart person. Oh, God, he yeah. thinks yeah. he's a brilliant person. He doesn't just think he's conservative or driven by his ideology. He believes and his followers believe that he is like super intelligent, that he is the conservative voice who is not just uh, a fire-breathing uh, ideology, but who's actually making exquisite intellectual arguments. Now, nothing could be further from the truth. I mean, David, I know you believe that conservatives tend towards racism, but what would you say if I told you that Democrats started the Ku Klux Klan? <laughs> yes, that's exactly how he talks. Oh, yeah, right, right. Like, boom, wow, what, yeah. a, what an amazing... <laughs> a revelation uh, that there are racists in both parties. And what an inc wow! You're such a genius, Dennis Prager. Yeah, and that's that. That is one of their big ones. One of their other big ones. Like if you ask them, Martin Luther King did exactly one thing in his life, and he said uh, he he would like to be judged by the content of his character, and that that's was. It. It. He was at heart one of us. He was a conservative. But that the thing is, is that we scoff at that. We laugh at that because it's so insane. But what you're saying is, is that there is a huge audience out there that is eating this stuff up and believing it. So I guess yeah. I want to turn to the to the audit here. So who are some of the guests you're having on this season of the audit to uh, meticulously go through how this propaganda system uh, works and you've already done the, the podcast so give us a couple of the of the highlights people should be should be looking for yeah i mean we've we brought in <clears throat> as you say the stuff is kind of ridiculous and it feels ridiculous you know we're bringing in people who are genuine experts in topics and then forcing them to watch these incredibly stupid videos and they must then, hate you they must like hate uh, you no they seem bit. to enjoy it for some reason uh you know we kicked off with um uh daniel bester who's a, a professor of history and foreign affairs was an advisor to the bernie sanders uh, campaign um, to talk about uh, history and foreign affairs. We just did Jared Yates Sexton, who's a historian, talking about the founding fathers. Professor Richard Wolf joined us for an upcoming one in which we break down videos on leftism. We've got a couple surprises we want to we want to save for folks. You know, the idea is to take these people who actually really do or know exactly what they're talking about and uh, are kind of unassailable on that and force them to hear this stuff and and take it on. Um, and also in the middle of it, we have a couple of episodes where because it gets to be too much, we brought in friends who are kind of, you know, politically aware, but also very funny and just sprung videos on them that they had no idea what was coming and then recorded oh. their reactions. <laughs> like spontaneous reaction. Yeah. 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 So, so I just, just as a, as a, let's, let's put some meat on the bones here. Like Dave, what are, what are some of the central uh, theses that the, the hypothesis that, Prager University, Dennis Prager, puts forward? What, what are some of the founding kind of arguments and principles uh, that is being pumped with a giant mass bilge pump into <laughs> the American discourse? I would say the biggest one is that liberals are the real racists. Um, I think that's their the one they always kind of come back to, which, which I should I should interject and say that, that one has made a resurgence of late <laughs> yes. with the insistence that if you're mad at Clarence Thomas for getting billionaire right. gifts uh, right. while issuing rulings that help 
uh, billionaires, that must mean you are a virulent racist. I mean, Correct. Senator Mike Lee, uh, former yep. uh, uh, Sam Alito clerk on the Supreme Court, Utah Republican, has been just pumping this. Ted Cruz has, has said this. Yeah, like you're a racist if you think Clarence Thomas shouldn't be corrupt. But what you're saying is, is that part of the, the foundation for this argument, this ridiculous argument, part of why conservatives are apparently receptive to this is because Den people like Dennis Prager have been priming that pump forever. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. They, yeah and that's why the, the CRT, you know, anti the, that whole movement in schools is happening. It's because that that counteracts everything that people like Prager out there are, are preaching like they're preaching just historical nonsense. So they they're going to try to stop the actual history from being taught in schools, even though CRT is not being taught in schools. Like Prager will acknowledge that that, you know, the founding fathers, some of them owned slaves, but he'll also tell you you shouldn't judge people by today's standards and that a lot of the people right. who own slaves are actually very good people. Yes, uh, there's, there's a lot of that. There, the, the founding father worship uh, is, of course, what you'd expect. And, and they do go to that a lot. There's a lot of founding father stuff. There's also just a ton of pro corporate that they are massively funded by fossil fuel companies. Well, let's 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 talk a little bit about that. You know, what, what do we know about who is funding the uh, Dennis Prager empire? Do you want to talk about the Yeah, there's the two brothers, Dan and Ferris Wilkes, who are uh, fracking billionaires, kind of religious uh, um, eccentrics, shall we say. Um, and they've pumped millions and millions and millions of dollars into Prager U, primarily to, to pay for videos, you know, denying climate change. Um, that's kind of the biggest source uh, right now, but they get a lot of donations as well from listeners. I, I presume Prager University is one of the sources and promoters of the idea that the earth has always warmed and there's been cycles and yeah. I mean, I know these are, you know, right. There's been cycles in the temperature and the earth has always warmed and please trust, you know, Dennis Prager, a bloviating moron on a mic. Don't trust every inner scientist in, in the world, right? This is where this is, this is a, <laughs> a foundational sort of amplifier of that. I assume. Yeah. yeah it's, it's big on, on that. It, and, it, and it's worse. I mean, they just have um, videos that, that are just just straight up fossil fuels are better for us than um, than renewables. There's a guy named Alex Epstein, which I you know tried to do a deep dive on, but basically he's just a guy that got out of college, uh, lives in San Diego, and started what he calls a think tank. But it was just uh, for him to do videos like this and and then pop on news shows. And, uh, and Prager started giving him tons of money to just come out and say fossil fuels are great. And it, it, you feel like you're watching, you know, some sort of expert on the issue, but it's just some, it's just some idiot who lives in San Diego who decided to be pro fossil fuels. And there's not a lot of people that are going to do that. I mean, really strongly pro fossil fuels. That, that's just straight up the Wilkes brothers giving a guy money, allowing him to make a decent living by making straight up propaganda for their company. And then he gets invited on you know, new shows because he's now an authority voice on this stuff. I want to go into the, into how Prager university targets parents uh, and even children, because that, that, that actually, I, you know, I knew about Dennis Prager and I knew, I, I knew about kind of the standard issue uh, uh, bullshit that the right promotes, but the propaganda targeting of parents and children is something that I, I didn't know, certainly at the at the level that I now know, having listened to some of, of, of the, the audit on this, can we talk a little bit about about that and how specific it is and how they actually do that? There's a, a, a article in the American Prospect by Amelia Pollard um, from 2021 that I think is the first one that I found and made me aware of how they're going after schools. But in it, she notes that Prager U began targeting children in campaign ads on Facebook and YouTube. So they were going after Gen Z and parents had no idea that that was happening. And then through that, they also had, uh, they set up uh, like an educational organization wing sort of operation through Prager U to get it into teachers' hands. So find those right-wing teachers, get these videos in front of kids. Uh, and it's, and it's been effective. It's not, it's not a part of curriculum, but if you have a right-wing teacher, he's going to put this up in a classroom if he can get away with it. And so that's how they're getting it into schools. And that's very effective. 
Are you saying it's de- it's in some ways designed for teachers to use in like public schools? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, and that that's where it would only have any weight because you take a look, especially the kids' videos. This um, the the they hired a woman a little while back named Jill Simonian, who's a big school choice quote unquote advocate. Um, hates critical race theory, hates diversity, equity, inclusion programs. And she's in charge of their kids programming. And you look at this stuff and it's subpar even by Prager U standards. I mean, they're just terrible, terrible, terrible shows. Um, probably the worst. We haven't gotten into it too much on the show because it's mostly visual is a, a show that she hosts called Craftery. And we did put together a little video that we put out last week on Twitter um, where she builds, you know, it's like crafts for kids, but um, uh, they make fighter jets out of paper planes and um, they build Israel's Iron Dome yes. and talk about how important <laughs> self-defense is. Today, we're making a DIY rocket blaster to learn about one of the world's most amazing inventions that keeps people safe, Israel's Iron Dome. It's a high-tech defense system that protects millions of people from attacks. It uses rockets to destroy enemy rockets in the sky before they fall on cities in Israel and other places. The Iron Dome works day and night in hot and cold weather, and it doesn't hurt anyone, even the enemy that's attacking. There's nothing else like it on Earth. I mean, it's awful, awful stuff. She has a whole video about how uh, uh, parents, like, you know, once your kids see this, they're not going to want to watch Disney anymore, and they'll actually learn something. And there's no way any child is watching this voluntarily going, oh, wow, cool. No way. But if you're sitting in a classroom and some authority figure is like, now nah, we are going to watch this, <laughs> you know, it's, it's going to have some weight. In, two, in 2020, they started an initiative called PrEP, which is an educational program and like 6,000 teachers and parents signed up. Uh, you give a donation and then that gives you program materials and there's a private Facebook group where you can all talk and try to push it into schools. I presume that this is part of, for instance, the movement that seems kind of um, spontaneous as opposed to uh, uh, directed. The movement to remove, downplay, uh, and suppress education on things like climate change in the schools. I mean, Mm -hmm. just this past Mm -hmm. week, There was this headline, Utah State Board of Education considers removing climate change from curriculum. Now, what's incredible about that in particular is that the Great Salt Lake is quite literally drying up in part because of climate change, which could create one of the biggest um, toxic ecosystems in the entire world, an uh, arsenic laced dust in that in the biggest city in that state. And that state is now considering removing climate change from its yeah. its curriculum. And I have to believe that part of the, I guess, grassroots push for this has to do with the Prager University bilge pump, pumping the idea that climate change isn't happening. It's not real science. Therefore, it shouldn't be taught in schools. Like all of these things are connected, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. They're completely connected. This is literally, that's where you go back to the Wilkes Brothers. These as rich people getting their wishes by using a a guy who's an expert in communication. I mean, Prager, you don't you're not on radio for as long as he is without without being very good at what you're doing. And they're using that guy to set up new media uh, and use the the new landscape to push it out to these people. And it's incredibly effective. And and I I watch what they're doing. I see what they're doing. And, and you watch because it's always with the conservatives. They're mad about what they're doing. Right. And their their big pushback in schools of what are they teaching? What are they doing? It's because this is what they're doing. They're pushing this stuff in there. So people who are listening to this will wonder, well, why do I want to listen to this? Even if you guys are critiquing it and showing how how bad it is, I guess the, the question might be not only why did you guys choose this? for this series, this, this season of the, of the audit, but what you hope to come out of this, I mean, is, is part of it that this is just being pumped into the discourse unchallenged and some, there needs to be some sort of response. Like, like what is the answer uh, to, 
to this kind of stuff, because I know it, it, it ends up being in the free speech debate. Oh, we got to shut down speech, misinformation, you know, censor the Internet. That's I'm sure that's what Dennis Prager would say. You know, uh, this is just part of the left's attempt to, like, censor me or whatever. You know, I mean, they always can. I, I, and by the way, I, I know I'm off on a tangent here, but the, the right always likes to say, oh, we believe we believe in free speech. Then you criticize their speech and they say you're trying to you're trying to censor me. It's like, no, bro, like when free speech means you say something stupid Criticism and I have speech. the free speech right. <laughs> to say what you're saying is stupid and show how stupid it is with the actual facts but 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 to the to the question what do you hope to come out of of this kind of endeavor like why should people listen to the audit and subject themselves to that content <laughs> i think i think you need to know what you're facing and i and i particularly in our environment you know if you're worried about misinformation you know coming out of trump or whoever else well, uh, guess what? This is these are the people that are the building blocks of it all. Like they they're undermining the education of our kids and they're making I'm sorry, but this I, I say if you go to Prager University, you get it's the only degree you can get in America that makes you dumber. So <laughs> so people need to know when someone is talking about Prager U or, you know, when they heard a video that said this, how just how dumb and bereft of facts it truly is. But more importantly, on top of that, the real reason for me for Prager is I'm a dad and I have a 13 year old kid and I know what these people are doing because I am one of the guys that goes down to school boards and counteracts the crazy fascist guy who just said something about communism and blah, blah, blah. But we need to start going to school boards and saying this can't be in schools. And here's why. Here's some videos just take like five videos and say, here's here's some videos and here's what they say. And then say, this cannot be in our schools, just like the right wing is doing with CRT, which is actually not in our schools. They've invented a fake boogeyman, but they're really doing this. So parents need to take charge. You mentioned critical race theory. Let's talk a little bit about that, because Dennis Prager, I'm sure, I presume, is obsessed with uh, critical race theory. Why don't we, why don't we just take a, a moment to, to explain in layman's terms, what is critical race theory and what kind of nonsense does Dennis Prager and Prager University put out there about critical race theory? Well, critical race theory. So people first need to know that it's, it's a, it's a, a, a college and above sort of thing you would learn about. It's never been in it's anything been below for decades. Yeah. It's, and it's been around forever, but it's never been below top below that level. But it's, it's, it's a way to, to learn the, the systematic racism that exists within America. It, it explains it, it breaks it down and helps you understand from the beginning of the country. Uh, you know, the 1600s all the way up till now, how we got here. What happened? No, but even even broader than that. I mean, what it is is and, and they, they play on this. They play on people's dopey grasp of words. It's not they see critical and they play on that. It's critical of America. No, it's applying a critical right. eye to history. And one of the things that comes out of that is you start to realize that, like, oh, yeah, there's kind of a racist history to this country. But they, they focus on that one aspect of critical race theory, and they know that it doesn't take much to make people feel uh, personally attacked by it. And and then they just twist the knife. And it's like, we have to start. Your, your kids are being made to feel bad about who they are because they're being told that they're evil. It's like, no, they're not. It's it's I learned this stuff. I mean, I learned history in high school and it was a fairly progressive school. And it did not make me feel bad about myself. It made me feel bad for the way this country treated people over the centuries. And and, and I, I also think like you can acknowledge the, the the bad stuff of the past. It doesn't mean that you personally did it. It means that you, you need to learn from that and Make your country better. I mean, ultimately, I actually think all of this goes to something deeper and core for conservatives, which is any attempt to create a more perfect union is equated with a lack of patriotism uh, and a, a, an alleged hatred of the country. And what's incredible about this is that, again, the idea of making a more perfect union about th of this country being a project to continue to improve the conservative ideology is fundamentally uh, uh, hostile 
to that most American notion. And I think that's, that bleeds through on everything, right? Like make America uh, great again. Even that is like trying to improve things beyond what America once was because like America 40, 50, 60 years ago was an apartheid state, right? Like the Jim Crow laws, like it was a f- yeah. in practice, like the South as a, one example was an apartheid state, like resurrecting that. That's not part of the project of a more perfect union. Although maybe what I, maybe you go even darker, maybe that is the project for conservatives. That is the project of like oh, a more perfect union so is racist. to go all the way back to to that. Yeah, and there is there is this streak, and Prager's great at finding. You know, he was uh, deeply involved with with I think um, um, you know helping Larry Elder form a career in radio back in the day, and he's still doing stuff like this. He's got. Right now, there's a woman who's kind of one of their rising stars. She hosts her own show, and she has a lot of the videos. Um, her name is Amala Ekpenobi. Um, we had, <laughs> Wyatt Sinek came out the other day, and he calls her Brizaro, as in the bizarro Brianna Joy Gray. <laughs> and um, she's uh, supposedly, she's one of these people, she was like a, a progressive activist. She says she has a Black Lives Matter tattoo, but she never shows it. Um, and then she saw three or four Dennis Prager videos and she realized how how racist black people were. And they drag her out. I was just watching. I got 10 minutes into it and I had to stop her new one today um, is titled Is Jordan Neely the new George Floyd? And and of course, George Floyd is like for them is an example of how fraudulent, deceptive the left is, because I don't know, I guess he had it coming. Um, yeah, he was uh, on like Jordan Neely had it coming. And so rather than if Dennis Prager sat there and did this stuff, it would look like what it was. But they have this attractive young black woman with tattoos who's like, hey, we're all in it together. and We're all wonderful. And we're trying to like, and oh, my gosh, you know, it's awful what happened to this guy. But he had it coming. Uh, Here's 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 my my like like final question about Dennis Prager, which is seems to me Dennis Prager is the man is one version of the man with a thousand faces that if it's not Dennis Prager, it's some other Dennis Prager. There's a Dennis Prager. There's always going to be a Dennis Prager, Mm -hmm. right? There's always going to be that person has been in our history forever. It's been in not just our history. It's been in human history. Yep. Yeah. Forever. So I think the ultimate question then becomes in respecting the idea that, that we free speech is good. The first amendment is good and necessary and understanding that there will always be that huckster abusing the first amendment to pump bile and bilge and bullshit into the discourse. Then what does a future look like in which we know those things will exist, but the outcomes are better or at least the political power of of that nonsense is lessened like what is a a vision of of the of a realistic vision of the future where dennis prager still has his first amendment rights to do all this stuff but it is much less politically powerful i mean is that is that a reality or is that or you know is that just impossible i think we're living through a time that's similar to when the printing press came out and then there was all you know the whole world was was a flame for a while because people who hadn't been getting information were suddenly getting information we're living there now uh, again but i think watching all this stuff and seeing how the younger generations act, this is all geared toward older people and hmm. the younger people are not buying it. And they have, uh, they have a very, very accepting generation. Uh, you know, I watched my son go through it and, and I think it's, I think it's, it's just youth. Youth comes along and goes, no old people. All that stuff is crazy. And you just have to wait for time to go by and more stuff will be accepted. Um, on that level, on the other level, man, we we really got to watch out for the control they can have over us through you know pri- all the spying and everything else they can do with technology. Like that's a genuine like concern that I had don't have an answer for. Well, I I I think you I hope you are right about younger people that younger people that the younger generation is a little bit more media literate has a more finely tuned yeah. uh, bullshit detector. In addition to the fact that the younger generation is 
not as receptive to right-wing uh, corporate propaganda. Although I, I, I got to believe there'll be some young version of Dennis Prager uh, who will occupy they will. that space. Well, they're already on his channel. But the thing, I mean, the thing too, you know, that, that we're not hitting that we need to. Because I mean, part of what we're doing is we're trying to shine a light on these. And, you know, there's a lot of schools that are showing them knowingly. But there's probably places, we know there's places where people aren't quite aware that these are being shown. And if we can get people and parents to go, hey, wait a minute, stop showing this shit to my kids, we'll have done something good. But much further beyond that, you, you want a solution. All the things you're talking about are completely true. Where's the opposition to that? Where is, if you're going to talk about organizational party politics, where is a party that stands in opposition to all those conservative ideals that, that are destroying us? Because we don't have one. We have a right and we have a center. Well, I mean, the, we, we've got the Washington generals. We've got the Washington yeah, generals exactly. going up against the Harlem Globetrotters of evil. And then, you know, uh, it, that's why that's in part why we're there, why we are where we are as well. Well, that's why everyone has to listen to the audit to really understand how powerful a propaganda system uh, this is uh, to really understand in your local community, in your local at the school level and the like, uh, where some of this extremism is coming from, to be uh, aware of it so that you can call it out and prevent it from getting into uh, your school system. Can I just say one thing? The the best way to counteract this is to massively tax billionaires. Why, why do you say that? Because that's who's giving them so much of their money. The, 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 you know, I looked up one guy, he's got like $900 million, a Mormon guy, a conservative. They're, they, this is what they, they just have extra money lying around and they get to do this with it instead of us using it to benefit society. This is what they're doing, making propaganda to undermine us and create lies. Oh, yeah. By the way, should we mention the words have not been said? Prager U is nonprofit. So these deductions are tax deductible. I can't believe I can't believe we buried that lead. But just, just, just yeah. uh, <laughs> worth saying again yeah. that Dennis Prager who rails on socialism, talks about the free market, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, up from the bootstraps, <laughs> like, right, all that horse shit that he is putting out there. America is a completely free enterprise situation. Dennis Prager's organization gets a massive tax write-off that regular, normal, everyday people Everyday companies do not get Dennis Prager gets the Prager University at, in being organized like that gets a massive tax write off. Some would argue that is a tax subsidy to pump this bilge into the system. It's really should we go I back mean, and start over? I mean, I mean, that, honestly, like that is the most America fuck yeah part of yeah. this entire discussion. Yeah, yeah right? completely. Like, that that completely. really that's really really something. Josh Olson and Dave Anthony, they are the hosts of the audit. You can find it at levernews.com slash audit. Again, that's levernews.com slash audit. They're uh, current their third season, the current season is looking at Prager University, a powerful force in American politics. Go subscribe to the audit right now. Josh, Dave, thanks so much for taking time today. Can I just say one thing? Yeah, go ahead. This is the third time we've done something awful. I want to say next season, uh, we're just going to watch Deadwood. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're gonna audit Deadwood, <laughs> the greatest TV show in the history. Of TV. There you go, there you go. Thanks, guys. That's it for today's show. As a reminder, our paid subscribers who get Lever Time Premium, you get to hear next week's bonus episode. My interviews with Brendan Ballou, author of the new book Plunder: Private Equity's Plan to Pillage America, and an interview with Josh Rosner, co-author of the book. These are the plunderers, how private equity runs and wrecks America. This is a jam-packed bonus episode. If you want to know anything and everything about private equity, this is it. And you, you do want to know that because private equity is behind almost everything in America now. Brendan and Josh break down everything you've ever wanted to know about this industry. Again, which is arguably one of the most destructive industries in the entire American economy. To listen to Lever Time Premium, just head over to levernews.com to become a supporting subscriber. When you do, you get access to all of Lever's premium content, including our weekly newsletters and our live events. And that's all for just eight bucks a month or 70 bucks for the year. One last favor. Please be sure to like, subscribe, and write a review for Lever Time on your favorite podcast app. The app you are listening to right now, take 10 seconds and give us a positive review in that app. 
And make sure to check out all of the incredible reporting our team has been doing over at levernews.com. Until next time, I'm David Sirota. Rock the boat. The Lever Time Podcast is a production of The Lever and The Lever Podcast Network. It's hosted by me, David Sirota. Our producer is Frank Capello with help from The Lever's lead producer, Jared Jacang Mayer. 